name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with your spirit. Good day, my dear sisters and brothers, as we celebrate the third Sunday of the holy season of Advent, preparing our, ourselves, our hearts, and our souls to receive the birth of Jesus into our lives. And we begin conscious of our own shortcomings and our own failures, asking the Lord to forgive us. And so together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. I exalt for joy in the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favour from the Lord. I exult for joy in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. He has wrapped me in the cloak of integrity. Like a bridegroom wearing his wreath, like a bride adorned in her jewels. For as the earth makes fresh things grow, as a garden makes seeds spring up, so will the Lord make both integrity and praise spring up in the sight of the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. May you all be kept safe, spirit, soul, and body for the coming of the Lord. Be happy at all times. Pray constantly. And for all things, give thanks to God. Because this is what God expects you to do in Christ Jesus. Never try to suppress the spirit or treat the gift of prophecy with contempt. Think before you do anything. Hold on to what is good and avoid every form of evil. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy. And may you all be kept safe and blameless, spirit, soul, and body for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has called you, and he will not fail you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. A man came, sent by God. His name was John. He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light, only a witness to speak for the light. This is how John appeared as a witness when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He not only declared, but he declared quite openly, I am not the Christ. Well then, they asked, Are you Elijah? I am not, he said. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, Who are you? We must take back an answer to those who sent us. What have you to say about yourself? So John said, I am as Isaiah prophesied, a voice that cries in the wilderness, make a straight way for the Lord. Now these men had been sent by the Pharisees and they put this further question to him. Why are you baptizing if you are not the Christ and not Elijah and not the prophet? John replied, I baptize with water, but there stands among you, unknown to you, the one who is coming after me, and I am not fit to undo his sandal strap. This happened at Bethany on the far side of the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, my dear sisters and brothers, we have just listened to our sacred readings celebrating the third Sunday of the holy season of Advent. The Gospel is speaking to us from the Gospel of St. John. And it said, St. John the Baptist's response to those who came to question him about his, uh, the reasons for being where he was out in the desert by Bethany. He said, There stood among you, unknown to you, the one who is coming after me, and I am not fit 
to undo the straps of his sandals. There stood among you, unknown to you, the one who is coming after me. Now the historical background being, my dear sisters and brothers, as we mentioned last week, that when the Babylonian Empire conquered and, and devastated and destroyed the city of Jerusalem and took its inhabitants, its people, into captivity. Simply because they really and truly had dropped their defenses. They would be disobedient, they would be immoral, and they were idolaters. Now, when you reflect on their journey out of Egypt, making their way to the promised land, being led by Moses. Coming towards the end, Moses had pointed out the promised land, the land of Canaan. The promised land, and he says, that is yours, but you have to live by the commandments of God to take true possession of the land. That was Moses. He also said to them as well, he was saying that, you know, if for whatever reason you misbehave or you sin against God, it will be taken from you. Remember the Babylonian captivity. It will be taken from you, but through repentance, you can have it back. True repentance. That's a historical fact, my dear sisters and brothers, that helps us to understand even the world we live in today. Now, we are all so conscious of the um, the pandemic. We're all so conscious of the COVID-19. And we have to ask ourselves the question, it is, did it happen because the world we live in, many of our people dropped their defenses, were being disobedient, disloyal, denying the existence of God. And there stands among you unknown to you. God never, ever leaves us, my dear sisters and brothers, but God does not punish us. We punish ourselves. Can you draw a comparison there, my dear sisters and brothers, that God is there present? Now, if you were to say that, people would say, oh, God does not exist. People would say it to your face. Well, prove it to me. That's, a, that's an interesting one. Prove it to me that God does not exist. Now, when the Israelites returned to the land and to the sacred city of Jerusalem, the city was devastated. It was destroyed. And 70 years in captivity, you can well imagine the further decay that took place. Now, just to give you uh, or to draw a comparison. No. The cathedral, the cathedral, the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, one millennium ago, one millennium ago, took a hundred years to build. That was one millennium ago. When we talk about Moses and we talk about the Babylonian captivity, we're talking about two and a half millennia ago. So the difficulties of bringing their city and, and their sacred temple back to its, its, its status, its, its sacred status, would have taken almost centuries. So when John the Baptist came, the people were still disillusioned, depressed, over the condition of their city and they needed help, they needed to hear a voice, they needed support. So when John the Baptist came, 
in the wilderness, not too far from Bethany, they went out to hear him. They desperately needed to hear something to lift our spirits and to give them a sense that God is with them. And he said to his accusers there, there stands among you, unknown to you, the one who is coming after me, of which I am unfit to undo the straps of his sandals. And just of interest, my dear sisters and brothers, the Basilica, St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, only 500 years ago, took 120 years to build. So you can see the depression and the stress and the pain of the Israelites trying to rebuild their land, to try to rebuild their capital, the capital city of Jerusalem. But there stands where are we in all of this? When people say there's no God, God is punishing us, God is not punishing us. There stands among you, unknown to you, the one who is coming after me. And I am not fit to undo the straps of his sandals. It's to keep us in mind that we are living in the Advent season. We are preparing ourselves for the coming. Jesus Christ came 2,000 years ago. He will come again at the end of time. And he's coming into our hearts once we are open to receive him. He's there to be welcomed. He is there to be greeted. He's there to help in whatever way we can, but we must, in a very profound way, acknowledge him. Once we refuse to acknowledge the existence of God, once we refuse to acknowledge the existence of God, then we are being disobedient, and there's always a reason why we don't want God in our lives, for whatever that reason may be, and that is what this holy season of Advent is all about, to prepare our minds and our hearts and our souls for the coming of the child Jesus. But God is present. There stands among you, unknown to you, the one who is coming after me. And I am not fit to undo the straps of his sandals. Amen. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, 
who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, my dear sisters and brothers, we offer up our petitions, whatever they may be. Father, we pray for Pope Francis, Archbishop Jason Gordon, and the clergy, that they may be the voice in the wilderness, proclaiming the good news, and leading your church in the way to Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Merciful and loving God, grant us the graces needed as a church to carry out the corporal works of mercy as we have been anointed to do by bringing good news to the poor, binding up hearts that are broken, proclaiming liberty to captives, and freeing those in prison. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Dear God, we thank you for the prophet Isaiah, who assures us today of your faithfulness and goodness to all. Therefore, make both integrity and praise spring up in the hearts of all who exercise authority in our society, and also every citizen in the sight of all nations. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. O loving Father, as we journey through this holy season of Advent, help our parishioners of St. Francis and the wider community to learn, through your grace, to never suppress the Holy Spirit, to think before we do anything, and to hold on to what is good and avoid every form of evil. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty Father, we ask that through the grace of the Holy Spirit, you fill the hearts of men and women with a desire to be witnesses to the light, through vocations to the priesthood and to religious life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Also in our celebration, we remember all the petitions that have been placed on this altar today. People, good people of the communities are asking and giving praise and thanks to God for blessings received. We have people who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, wedding anniversaries. We have people who are giving thanks to God for blessings. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear us. Lord gracious hear us. We also pray for those who have asked for healing. But the Lord will raise his healing hand over them. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear us. Lord gracious hear us. We also pray for our beloved departed, that the Lord will receive them all into his heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear us. Lord gracious hear us. And as the Universal Church continues to celebrate the solemnity of a Lady of uh, Guadalupe, we pray together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and walk of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless God, our bread. By this water and wine, may we come to share in divinity of Christ, to humble himself, to share in all humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and walk of human hands, it will become our 
spiritual drink. Lord, wash me in my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us the saving walk. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and our brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all else, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, 
come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of the false and prepare us for the coming feasts. We make our prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go to serve, to love, and to serve the Church. Thanks be to God.
is put on hold All our plans have canceled, things have changed Nothing feels the same Disappointments, fear and doubt Go hand in hand and waves of worry threaten me Everywhere uncertainty But in the midst of chaos In the midst of fear There is something to remember Yes, there is something We all need to hear Joy is not cancelled God's goodness, kindness, His grace isn't running low, and He has not changed. His power is still abundant, His mercies are still new. God's plans have not been canceled. He's still in control And everything that matters still Remains So when the trials and tests they come Darkness only hides the sun And you can't seem to find your way No light of day There are some things we know for sure They never change, they will endure No matter what things look like all around us So in the midst of chaos In the midst of all your fears There is something you should remember Yes, there is something we all need to hear. Joy is not canceled. Peace still remains. God's goodness, kindness, His grace isn't running low. And He not changed his power is still abundant his promises they are all still true God's plans have not been cancelled he's fully in control and everything that matters still Remains. Yes, everything that matters still remains. Jesus.